Step out into the open air and claim your freedom waiting there. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Coffee in the Crowl. I'm Abigail Hobbs, and we're sitting outside on another blustering hot day. Wait, blustering? <laughs> I, think, I think I combined blustery winds with blistering sun. Okay, whatever. A blistering hot day and not very much wind. So it feels even hotter. But here we are, we're in the shade. Deo just came to lay beside me. Fayan is standing out in front of me just a little bit, looking really calm. I think she's gonna take a nap. And I am sitting here in the crowd, forcing myself to take some deep breaths. Um, oh my gosh, you guys. Guess what happens tomorrow? Which I guess when this podcast comes out is tomorrow. So when you are listening to it, it'll be today. Anyways, my girls are starting public school for the first time in their life. And then the day after that, Wednesday, my son leaves early in the morning to go to college. He's going to college in Illinois, so he'll be seven hours away from us. I'm excited for him, and it's just a lot of big changes for our family. So I'm feeling overwhelmed this week. I didn't even know if I was going to make it to come out and podcast today because um, it's going to be a crazy day today. It's been an really crazy week leading up to this, trying to um, get all the kids their school supplies and all the stuff that Jaden's going to need for college. And then um, my oldest daughter attended a, um, well, it was for freshmen students, but it was also for new students like an orientation. She'll be going in as a sophomore though. And uh, then we, of course, we went to the open house for both of my girls' schools. And that was hectic, but crazy, like trying to get their schedules and then find out where all their rooms were and meet their teachers and all the things that I have never done. It was a lot and very overwhelming for me, but it, I also feel better, um, like meeting their teachers and going around their school and knowing what, um, what they're going into a little bit of it anyways, right? Kind of getting to get a feel for it. And it's a lot, you know, is my son leaving? He's going to be far away. So I'm trying to think of all the stuff he's going to need to make sure he has, um, a good start for his first year of college. So anyways, um, I am trying to, <laughs> I was thinking I had no, I had had no time to prepare for my podcast. What am I going to talk about? But then I realized that last week I wrote a blog about all the big changes happening in our family and just, you know, my blogging allows me to process my life and, um, it really helps me. It's very, um, it's very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's been a really great tool for my healing. So, um, we have a piece of fan has got a piece of weed sticking out of her mouth. You silly girl. Wait, you want some of this coffee? I don't know. Zell's not over here yet. Where is Zell? Oh, she's out eating grass. Fayon is asking for some coffee. Should I give her some? Yes, I will. Actually not drinking coffee still. I'm drinking this blend from, I got from Natural Grocers. It's called Dandy Blend. Anyways, it has dandelions in it. It's yummy though. Here, do you want some? I think Fiona liked the Ticino, but she's not digging the dandy blend. Do you want some? No, she smelled it. She's like, no, thank you. Let's see if Dale wants it. Dale, you wanna try some? Come here. He likes to lay down here by my, oh, Dale likes it. <laughs> I gotta share with my animals. Somebody has to drink it. Okay, now I have a slimy hand. Anyways, it's been really good. And so an, an integral part of my healing, so, I just thought, you know what I'm going to do for today is I'm going to read my blog because it says a lot of what I'm processing and what I'm going through and just my feelings about it. And um, also I haven't had any time to prepare for podcasting because of all of it. So it's probably going to be a shorter podcast today, but I didn't want to not podcast this week. So I'm just decided, you know what, I'm going to show up 
and give what I have for today. And it's going to have to be enough. So, um, yesterday, Jennifer, Nate, and I were going through the house trying to organize all of these school shelves that Nate built for me a few years ago in our house that we've like had all of our homeschool books and our games and all of the, um, you know, our world globe and extra notebooks and paper and all that stuff has been stacked up in these um, shelves, but they really needed to be organized and I needed to kind of make some fresh clean space for them starting public school so that we're not mixing up last year's homeschooling with public school and all that stuff. So the girls and I a few weeks ago went through all the school books. So it was like the last thing left to do was to get these shelves all straightened up and the girls' school desk cleaned up. And in that process, I realized that I still needed to file all my records of homeschooling. Um, here's Zell. Zell's over here now, itching her face on my knee. You silly girl. They are so hot and sweaty, you guys. Um, Sidetrack really quick. Yesterday, it was 104 degrees, and I went out to check on the horses in the afternoon, like 4 p.m., and they were, Zell was sweating so bad, it looked like she was sweating out of her eyeballs. Her body was covered in sweat. Her face was covered in sweat. I have never seen a horse so sweaty that wasn't doing anything. Like, she's already getting super sweaty this morning. And she's my horse that sweats the most, and I'm not sure why. But she looks so miserable. So Jennifer and I, and, and my youngest daughter, Ava, helped me too, brought all the horses out one by one and rinsed them down with the hose for a long time until they would their, their body temperature cooled down and they would like <sighs> take a deep breath. And then I had to keep them in the shade until they dried because if you put a horse back out into the sun when they've been like overheated and they're still wet, they are, they're, the wet on their body will actually turn to sweat and they'll heat up again really fast. So you have to let them com basically completely dry down. So it was like almost two hours of um, rinsing all the horses off. I wasn't wa bathing them. I was just rinsing them and rinsing them and rinsing them, even their faces until they are cooled down. And you can tell they were just like, thank you so much. Anyways, I might have to do that several times this week because it's going to be a wicked hot week. So Zell is already like, please save me. <laughs> Hi, baby. You didn't get your dandelion. Um, here, back up a little bit. Back up so you can have some. So, not forward, backwards. There we go. There we go. You can have a little bit. Look, so right here. Here we go. She's like, I came all the way over here. Hmm. She likes it. So, anyways, um, we were. I was filing all of my, the rest of my homeschool papers from last year. So it was year 2022, 2023. And as I was putting them all in the file cabinet, I realized I I pulled the cabinet out and I was gathering all of my paperwork together and um, I reached back as far as I could and I barely could touch the back of this file drawer and it's packed full of school records and if you pull out the very 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 back stuff it's from when my son was five years old and when I started homeschooling him and I just realized like god I'm gonna cry um it's a really big change. Like, I've been homeschooling, you know, for for 12 years. And that's all I've ever done. So, like, it was, it was this bittersweet moment. Because I was like, damn, I'm really proud of myself. Like, that is a shit load of Zell. She's in front of the camera trying to move it. No, don't itch on the camera is a shitload of work um, that I have poured into my kids and I'm really proud of myself um, and I'm also like kind of scared and sad about this season because I'm like am I just gonna like be super lonely it's not like I'm gonna sit around all the time but um, it's just a it's a really big change and I've been the only one that I've schooled them you know like I've taught them all how to read and um, my kids are pretty smart and I'm not sure how because I don't feel very smart but like my girls both wrote books this last semester for English they wrote a book and um, Jennifer helped them she was amazing 
she got them to all the way to the point of um, where they printed it and they did their own binding on the book and they're beautiful books you guys they're just amazing and they've done an amazing job on them they're very well written anyways it's just I know it's time but it's hard like I just wanted like for me it was like wow like I've got all of their um, and of course I don't keep all of their papers but I have you know papers and and school from 12 years ago um, that I've kept as records for them and I've kept really good records for my kids because I thought if anybody ever doubts my kids schooling like I will be able to pull out so much and be like here look at all of this <sighs> it's a lot so anyways I'm gonna go ahead and read my blog and um, yeah I've got Fiona well, Fanna's butt is to me at the moment. <laughs> She's like, I'm here for you. I, I'm i like, you know, with my butt. I don't know. And Rayan is over here, and then Zell's behind me. And Sky is over by the tree. So you, I don't know if you can see her in the camera at the moment. But all my horses are here um, supporting me. And so I guess I'll read. There's a truck fixing to drive by, but it's not too usually too loud. Our neighbors have um, a cattle ranch right next to us so which is cool because we get to see cows all day long and my girls name all the baby cows so that's fun it's like having cows but you don't have to have the hard work of it nor pay for it so <laughs> that part's cool but it does make us want to have our own cow because like we can't really pet them they're kind of wild all right so i'm gonna let that cow the cow not the cow i'm gonna let the truck pass for a minute hi zell hi zell Okay, so this, the blog is called Leaping into a New Season of Life. Hello, my friends. I am happy to report that I am slowly recovering from my heat exhaustion episode. This morning, I biked for the first time in two weeks. I went with my daughter nice and early while it was 58 degrees, since being out in the heat still makes me feel sick. We only went seven miles, but it felt so wonderful to be on my bike again and feel the cool wind on my face. Although this season of healing has felt torturous at times, it has also been really beneficial in helping me change some of the toxic ways I have navigated my life. I am learning to listen closely to my body and honor it when it says it needs rest. It feels really good to love my body in this way. I don't think I'll... Oh gosh, my nose is running. Hold on. I did bring Kleenex for once. I remembered. And the horses are going to think it's a treat. It's not a treat. It's not a treat, so It's just Kleenex. They're like, it smells like candy. Sounds like candy, not smell. Do you need to blow your nose, though? Guys, if you're watching a video, Zell's nose is right by mine. She's like, here, Mom, just get mine. Here we go. I got your nose. You feel better? <clears throat> I don't think I'll be able to handle much heat until next summer, but I'm hopeful that by then, my body will be healed enough to adjust to the heat, and I will be a bit wiser. I'm so grateful that summer is ending soon and fall is right around the corner. The cool breeze this morning smelled like crisp fall leaves, mowed grass, and hope for this cyclist. Speaking of changing seasons, when this blog comes out, my girls will be in public school for the first time and my son will soon be driving seven hours away to start college. It has taken me a whole past year to arrive at this spot and finally feel peaceful. I have struggled. I have done a lot of deep digging I have cried a lot, and I haven't quit searching for what I feel is best for my kids. Do I still have fears? You bet. Do I still doubt my decision to put my girls in public school? Hell yes. Will it be an easy change? No. Nope. And never. I have always had my kids with me. Even when I worked as a therapeutic instructor in college before I had my own business, I took my kids with me. They would bring all their school books and I would help them on lunch break, and when we got home, Oh, helped them on lunch break and when we got home. I have been beyond dedicated to being available for my kids 24-7. I wanted to protect them. I wanted, to give, I wanted them to know that they were the most important thing in the world. I gave all of my life to raising, training, and teaching them, even when I longed to follow my dreams. So, you're into everything. Give me some space. Thank you. What I didn't know was that in sacrificing myself, I was teaching them to grow up and do the same. 
It's taken the last four years for me to sort this all out and allow myself to think outside the very conservative, judgmental, fearful box that I was raised in. I'm getting excited for my kids. Jaden is heading, I know I don't sound it very much. I'm like, I'm getting excited for my, I'm getting excited for my kids. I need to read that differently. Zelenka Breeze, you are about to drive me crazy. She's like a one-year-old. She's trying to eat my Kleenex and eat the camera. And I don't know what else she's doing. She's moving the camera. All right. Thank you. Take two. Jaden is heading off to start building his own life. I know it's going to be a challenge, but I also know that he has matured immensely this past year and become more confident in himself. I'm going to miss him as no words can describe, but it's time for me to let go. God, it's hard to let go, but my boy needs room to spread his wings and I can't keep him to myself forever. He's going to be shit amazing and this I am sure of. My girls are ready. They're ready to explore and discover new opportunities, make new friends, and put their values to practice. They are beautifully bold and brave. I know parts of it will be hard for them, like having to be stuck in a building sitting at desk for long hours, but I know there will also be other parts of it they will really love. We have so much to offer the world, and I truly believe that taking this step will help them be better prepared for life. I still get waves of overwhelming doubt and fear that just about paralyze me and make me want to change my mind and pull my kids close to me and never let them out of my sight. But I know that making decisions based on my fears is not something I want to do. I have poured everything I have into these kids and now it's time to let them go put it all to use. So what about me? Well, I'm finally going to be able to focus wholeheartedly on pursuing my dream with freedom for the taking. I have no clue how it will all pan out, but I know that I just have to keep trying until the right doors open. For the first time in my life of raising kids for 18 years, I won't be a stay-at-home homeschool mom. Weird. Totally weird to think about, but it also feels right. It's time. Time for me also to take wing. <clears throat> Zell. Space. Thank you. Change is one of the scariest things for humans. It's also the unknown. Oh, not it's also, sorry. It's the unknown that scares the shit out of me. But I refuse to stay stuck in a mindset that no longer serves me. Yes, trying new things is extremely uncomfortable, but I also know that we have to be uncomfortable in order to learn and grow. This is not just an opportunity for me to grow. This is also a chance for my kids to grow. And that to me is what makes it worth it. Sorry, blow my nose some more. I think that's all for today, my friends. I'm so proud of my kids. I'm also really proud of myself. I'm a whole different person than the woman I was four years ago. Navigating life isn't easy for any of us, but here we are doing the hard work and continuing to show up. For those of us whose lives are changing with the seasons, I'm sending you a huge hug. <laughs> Thank you, Zoe. We got this one day at a time. I love you guys. And then I have all my crazy hashtags at the end that you're just going to have to suffer through. <laughs> Hashtag embracing the seasons. Hashtag I love my kids. Hashtag change is hard. Hashtag public school. Hashtag new opportunities. Hashtag taking the leap. Hashtag mom of a college student. Hashtag holy shit, I'm going to be lonely. Hashtag if you see a lady sitting all day in her corral crying the whole first week of school, it's probably me. <laughs> That's it. If you guys want to read this blog, you can go to biketotype.com and it will be posting tomorrow the same time my podcast post at 6 a.m. <sighs> Anyways, I love all of you. Change is hard. I was talking to Jennifer about this, you know, even good change. And I truly believe that these are all really good changes. But when they're so big and they're so different from anything you've ever done, they're still hard. I mean, change is one of the hardest things that humans go through in life. Like mentally, emotionally, physically, it's 
really hard on us, but it's also one of the most healthiest things. So there's two sides of the coin. It's extremely hard. It can feel sometimes unbearably hard, but the flip side of the coin is it's so healthy. If it's the change that is going to help us continue growing and evolving in our lives, then it is beautifully, wonderfully designed to help us thrive in our lives. It helps our brain, which in turn helps our body. And I want to be that person that challenges myself and that puts my, continually puts myself in uncomfortable positions so that I can change and grow and evolve. And so I know this is really important. It's just really emotional for me and hard, but I'm not, you know, I've decided that those things don't get to be the, the, the factors that make me to decide yes or no, just because it's really hard or really scary. Um, that's why I've taken a long time. You know, we took all last year to talk about it. Nate, Jennifer and I have been talking about it for a year. And I went to the schools and met with the principals and the counselors with both of my kids and got a tour and just took a long time to talk about it with our kids and think about it. And I feel really good. Like I've arrived at it feeling very, as, I guess, as prepared as I can be. And, um, you know, like I needed to, I didn't want to go into it blindly. Um, I wanted to know. I wanted to be educated about it and make sure that my girls felt good about it too. So it's good. It's really good. Um, but yes, it's hard. So I'm sending huge hugs to all of you guys this week. The seasons are changing. Hopefully it started to cool down a little last week and now it's gotten like deathly hot again. So I think we have another week of death camp and then maybe we'll get some cooler weather, but changes are good. Seasons are good. And, um, I always think about that with the seasons, you know, when, when it's easy to complain about, oh, this is too hot or this is too cold or this is too windy or like, of course, as humans, we always tend to complain, but I remind myself that it's the change and it's having continually something different that is good because if it was always stayed the same, it wouldn't end up being this beautiful thing. We'd just be like, eh, this is just whatever. It's what it always is. So um, the variety is good for our, our life our brain and now I'm hugging Zoe's nose because <laughs> she's very cuddly today she's very snuggly I love you guys okay enough of that I will see you next week and uh, yeah we'll check in to see how our first week of school went and everyone else's um, kids are going to school starting school if you haven't already so um, lots of love to you I know this is a stressful season for moms trying to get their kids prepared and all their back to school stuff so you guys are awesome. If you're a mom, you're super awesome. <laughs> okay. Peace out. Love you. Psst. Did you think that this episode was cool? Because I did. I think you should just share it with one friend. Thank you so much. Bye. If I wrote it in a song, would you believe in more? If I busted out the lock, would you open the door? If I dare to speak my truth, would you still value me? If I reach my hand to you, would you reach yours back to me? Darling, there's no reason why you should have to hide. Step out into the open air and claim your freedom waiting there.